This is one of the most important tools a pilot has at his disposal to assist him before, during and after a flight and it's called the checklist. The checklist is a concept that was uh, initially introduced in the mid 1930s after the crash of a Boeing model 299. This particular plane was the most technologically sophisticated airplane of its time but also one of the most complex ones to operate. And unfortunately, during the, during the first test flight, the flight crew forgot to disengage the Boeing's uh, gas locks, causing the plane to initially pitch up and then stall. From that day, a lot has changed. And nowadays, uh, we can honestly say that uh, checklists are used extensively everywhere. And that's for a good reason, uh, aircrafts, are complex machines and it's very very easy to for a, for a pilot to either forget something or remember it incorrectly. With the help of a checklist pilots can um, prevent many accidents by, by ensuring that the aircraft is correctly set up for every phase of the flight. Typically a checklist includes several checks that you will inevitably memorize um, but that you, you, you should Try not to do by heart since that would defeat the purpose of having a checklist. Some of the checks that every checklist is uh, likely to include regardless of the aircraft are before takeoff, the pre-flight check, where one checks the outside of the aircraft and makes sure to have all the documents needed for the flight. The checks to perform before, during and after uh, you start the engine the taxi check where you make sure that the brakes and the flight instruments uh, work properly the run up where you do one last test of the engine or the engines in order to diagnose uh, any problems before you take off the check before departure where you ensure uh, that both the cabin and the passengers are secured and that the plane is uh, set up correctly for takeoff and then last but not least, the lineup check, where you switch on the landing light and you perform some last minute checks before taking off. Then once you are in the air, you typically have a couple of checks for each part of the flight. So during the climb, uh, you have the climb check, where among other things, you make sure that your flaps are retracted then after you reach your cruise altitude and level off, you have the cruise check, which is a check that you, you might perform multiple times during a long flight and where you ensure that your instruments are set properly and that you switch fuel tanks if needed. After the cruise check comes the descent check where you set the radio frequencies for approach and do a couple of other things before initiating the descent. Then, as you get closer to the airport, you generally have the approach check where you verify a few more things before the landing check, where you set the flaps for landing and prepare to land. Once landed, there are two more things left in the checklist. Uh, the after landing check, where you switch off the landing light, set the flaps up and do a few more things before taxiing to the parking. And then the engine shutdown and the parking procedure where you shut down the plane and secure it before uh, leaving it. Now, all these checks are typically found on most checklists. However, based on the aircraft, you will have different tasks uh, for each uh, check. So it is very important to familiarize yourself uh, with the checklist for your own plane. Having said that, if you want to see an example of a checklist, I link two checklists in the comments, one for a Cessna and one for a Piper, so that you can see uh, how they differ from one another. As always, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask in the comments. I'll try to answer as many questions as possible.